You must have heard this said so many times, proven beyond reasonable doubt. Even reasonable doubt needs to be proven beyond reasonable doubt. Well, I don't understand much of law, but our guest does uh, to talk uh, some, through some of the issues uh, that's been evolving concerning defections uh, in the in the political parties so far. Wally Balogun is a legal practitioner and partner, Greenbridge Partners, he joined us from our studios in Abuja. Thanks for joining us this morning. Well, um, I don't know. First of all, you want to speak to what uh, you heard uh, the senior advocate of Nigeria say just before we came on concerning the issue of uh, the judgment uh, on the... 20 lawmakers in Cross River State. Yes, it is indeed. Uh, Go ahead. An interesting position, so to say. Mm -hmm. uh, what the, the learned, uh, distinguished senior advocate talked about, he raised two fundamental issues about the, his disagreement with the court with respect of, to the territorial issue, why should they come to Abuja? Then, of course, he's talking about uh, uh, the said um, crisis in PDP. All these two issues, they are, they are, not, they are not difficult issues to understand. And they are in the public domain. What is the crisis in PDP is in the public domain. Then the issue of territorial issue, yes, I agree with him. That's the, the position with respect to the, uh, the Federal Court Chief Judge on the issue of filing political matters in the territorial divisions where cause of action arises. However, you see, when you're talking about the issue of constitutional interpretation, there have been diverse views with respect to the position of the Federal Court. There have been decisions up to the Supreme Court that when it comes to issue of constitutional interpretation, constitutional interpretation, then the, the issue of the territorial jurisdiction of the division of the federal court perhaps may have to take a back seat. Ideally, I have no issue. The federal court is supposed to be one, whether in Calabar or whether in Abuja. But the position is actually much more important than that. It's a very volatile and germane constitutional issue. To me, this is the crux of the matter. The issue of defection is a very fundamental issue. So the issue of whether it's determined in Calabar or it's determined in Abuja, to me, is a secondary issue. The primary issue possibly we should be considering now is to look at the issue of defection and the implication on our polity, this is what I believe is more important. Mm. Well, the issue of defection is, you know, substantial because even the constitution seems to be clear about it, or isn't it? Isn't the constitution clear about what happens when legislators, whether in the National Assembly or State Houses of Assembly, move from one political party that sponsored them into office to another? You are very right. If there's anything that the Constitution is very clear about, is this position. You are talking about Section 68 with respect to the House of Rep, with respect to the Senate, then Section 109 of the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, that has amended the position of the law, not just statute, of the Constitution, which is the organic law of the land. The ground norm is very explicit. Unlike the corresponding position with respect to the executive, as far as the issue of the legislators are concerned, if you defect, the condition under which you can defect is explicitly stated. If you look specifically at um, subsection 1, sub G, the conditions are stated there. And these are conditions that are a matter of facts. Are the facts well settled? You have to be able to show, one, that there is indeed factionalization. In a political party, there's faction A, there's faction B. Alternatively, you must be able to show by question of fact too that there is indeed a merger of two or three political parties. Say, for instance, you belong to NCP. NCP has now merged with APC. 
and has now merged with PDP. Three parties now coming together. These are clear court provision of the constitution. Or the condition under which you can now say, oh, I want to change to another party. I want to cross carpet to another party. Or I want to up into another party. The constitution have given explicit provision for that as far as the issue of the legislation is concerned. So I have no doubt that uh, the Lenin seat too, it will be very conversant with this provision. And they are not just letter of the constitution. The uh, position that have been determined by our courts all the way to Supreme Court. So it's not a new issue. And it's not a not issue Balogun, of law. It's not a just one issue second. of law. If you can hear me, why then do we litigate over it if it is as clear? I, I remember that he, you know, there is a case back in you know, pre pre previous um, um, administrations in the National Assembly where there have been defections. But then for one reason or the other, the principal officers or maybe the Senate or the House of Representatives says, you know, well, that it didn't happen. The movement wasn't allowed. So if the constitution is clear about it, how come then that this has been happening willy-nilly and it will seem like um, until now no one is, is really ready to enforce the constitution? Yeah, I agree with you. Two issues, two reasons, among others. You want to look at uh, the, the wordings of our constitution, that section 68, section 109, for both the, the state house of assemblies and for the senate and the house of rep. I must agree with you they are worded in such a way that it's a little bit cubesome. Particularly when you are doing a comparative analysis of Nigerian constitution with Indian constitution. And Indian, Indian constitution equally has a similar provision. But indeed, unlike ours, that is expressly worded what will be the procedure if you jump from one political party to another without certain yardstick that have been defined by the constitution being met. It is very explicit that you are expected to tender your resignation letter within a defined period, within 14 days. If you fail to do that, then your position is deemed to have been vacated. Unfortunately, our constitution here is not as explicit. So that gives room for the, the principal officers, principal officers of the, 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 the National Assembly and the State Assembly to be able to interfere with it. That is constitutional problem on its own in terms of the drafting, the wordings of the, the, the relevant section of the Constitution 68 and 109. Secondly, you possibly may be talking about, we have had the issue of the former Senate President, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Saraki. We have also had the issue of uh, the present governor of uh, Sokoto State when he was the speaker, moving from PDP to APC, from APC back to PDP. We have seen all this. But if you look at those scenarios, for whatever reason, some of them were actually not challenged. In fact, even in this uh, current regime, we have had a couple of states where there have been such defection and nobody took it up. Perhaps they were just politically overwhelmed and they didn't do anything about that. However, there are instances of states where such issues have been taken up. We have had issues in those states. We have had issues in Plateau State. We have had in Delta State where similar decisions have been taken up. Now you raise that issue, if it's so explicit, why are then people still litigating on it? it regrettably, it's a Nigerian thing. Then it's also a weakness on our jurisprudence. If a legal practitioner, if the position of the law is so clear, and a legal practitioner will approach a court on issue that has been determined up to the Supreme Court, that becomes an issue of ethics, a disciplinary issue where a party can approach the court that this lawyer knows the position of the law which has been determined by the Supreme Court now comes to court to also ask court to litigate on similar position it becomes the issue of misconduct so indeed it is not right for lawyers of res irrespective of the caliber to approach a court on a well settled issue of law mm. like this particular one all right everybody so even people on the street you don't have to be a lawyer you should be able to establish, indeed, has there been shown that there's a division in PDP? Anybody on the street can answer this question. But you know, the, the is question there a now is... Um, These are the two scenarios. If you, if you can hear me, the question is, I mean, 
people will say which political party really does not have divisions i mean look at the, the ruling party and the opposition today if there's anything they have issues internally so you wonder at what point would you have these issues but that aside it would seem that there's a new trend now because just about three weeks ago we we had the federal high court's judgment on uh, the ebony lawmakers as well and now we have this one so it will look like there's a new trend of um, perhaps the judiciary trying to reduce these instances of, you know, defecting with mandate. But there was a point that was made yesterday, and I'd like to get your thoughts on this, uh, about whether or not they had indeed defected. So they said, well, uh, they, 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 had, they, they didn't defect or, or what? They, didn't, they don't have membership card of the APC when indeed there were pictures and announcements that they had defected and all of that. He said they got an expulsion letter, what have you. So really, at what point is defection validated? Is it when you start associating yourself with a new political party, when you pick up the card, or when you're expelled from your party? Is the law explicit on that one? The scenario you have uh, mentioned and just like I referred to earlier, these are questions of facts. Nigerian politicians, just like we have seen, they do not defect quietly. They defect to the knowledge of every member of the society. For instance, the technical aspect, which is the details of the fact, oh, have they, they, have they, have they been expelled? You know, it's a technical issue that can be taken up. Expulsion uh, is not one of the grants, as stated by the Constitution, that you are expelled is not one of the grants. The Constitution is explicit. It said that there is a factionalization. And we have also seen factionalization of PDP in this country before. So it's not a, the fact that political parties are having internal scuffles, they have issues within themselves, that does not amount to factionalization of the party. For instance, we just saw what happened in APC recently. The issue of uh, the, the acting chairman traveling for medicals and another person acting. That person never claimed to be substantive chairman. He said he was acting. So that's not tantamount to factionalization of the party. So if you say PDP is factionalized, who is the alternative chairman of another just, faction just of it? They are all questions of fact. They you all have said, issues. Uh, Mr. Balogun, just one second. Uh, you just said something now that uh, expulsion is not a ground recognized in the constitution so if a political party for instance expels a member who has been voted into office maybe in the national assembly or something the party expels that member what happens to that person what happens to that officer what happens to that seat in my candid view the particular candidate or the particular person remains in office because his expulsion is not born out of his willingness to join another political party. You may call that as a gap in our constitution. Of course, God forbid that COVID constitution makes provision for every scenario. But the constitution and the constitution maker in their wisdom, they have only provided two scenarios. Is either there is factionalization as established by fact or there is a merger so constitution cannot make provision for everything. If you are a member of a political party and you have issues with your party and you are expelled, that is beyond you. It's not a voluntary act of leaving party A to go to party B. So to me, there's no difficulty with that. So, so should the political a party member of the Senate or a member of that should that or political assembly, party, my apologies, should that political party go to court and say to the court, this fellow has been expelled by our party. We want our mandate back. The question then you'll be asking is, is there a confusion as to the ownership of the vote, the person or the party, as has been ruled recently? Indeed, you have just touched another very naughty point. It is the issue of, we just, it's an ongoing issue now with respect to a boy state. Is it political party? Or is it candidate? My view is that a combination of both. But then, we are not navigating a novel position here. This is a position that has equally been determined. That's why the, uh, 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 the Constitution, as you know it, 
is an evolving document. It's an organic document that is being made for, to allow for growth and development. If you look at the genesis of this uh, word, is the vote cast for political party or for candidates. The genesis began from Amish's case. And Amish's case, when that incident happened, of course, it could not, it was, you can't re re review that Amish's case in isolation. But then the law has evolved since Amish's case. Supreme Court has taken, immediately after Amish's case, the lawmaker, in their wisdom, amended the law to forbid, to restrain such a scenario. That is Section 141 of the Electoral Act, whereby they now say, never again should a candidate like Amishi emerge, having not participated in the el entire electoral process. So before you can become a flag bearer of a party now, or you can become a winner, you must have participated in all, every segment, because election is a process. So after Ameshi, there was an amendment. So in law, such is allowed, the National Assembly, they have amended the law to actually tactically overrule the position of the Supreme Court there. That's not the end of it. The Supreme Court itself, along from the High Court to the Court of Appeal to the Supreme Court, they have also bought into the amendment by the National Assembly to now say, oh, it's a marriage of both. The party sponsor a political, a candidate and the people vote for candidate using the platform of political party. Oh, there have been instances where they say, oh, if you go and vote, it's the logo of political party you see there. But after the voting, you will see so many provisions of the constitution and of the electorate talking about the candidate shall, the candidate shall be declared. So there's a lot that has to do with the candidate. Unfortunately, not with, with, with the position of the independence uh, candidate. We have not been able to to be able to ascertain the current position of, uh, of the constitution on it. But as far as we are concerned now, I am of the view that actually both of them, you know, for the voters, you have party loyalists who will only vote for their party, irrespective of who they sponsor. You also have some people that are political. They look at the candidate. Oh, this is the candidate. I believe this person can deliver. They don't want to, they don't belong to any political party. They don't have loyalty to any political party. They vote for individual. Indeed, it's a marriage. It's a cocktail of both positions. The, but as far as our jurisprudence is concerned on who is the uh, vote cast for today, the position of the law is that the votes are cast for candidate. It used to be for political party. That was Amishi. But after post Amishi, the laws has evolved to now say that the political party is a vehicle. It's just a platform by which it, 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 there's a recent decision of um, CPC and Obugoda, and there's also another one by the Court of Appeal recently, where they talk about Amesh's position. If you see a boy case, where uh, is still an ongoing matter, a boy case is primarily premised on the fact that the votes are cast for political party. It's primarily premised on Amesh's. If you if you read that judgment, they are talking about Amesh Faleke Kogi scenario, but the Supreme Court. In that CPC and Bo, um, uh, um, Buguda's case, they have revealed that we, by this decision, have set aside Amish's position. So it is Amish's position by the Supreme Court that is the political party that people cast their vote for. But the Supreme Court have departed, in, in, in addition to the position of the National Assembly, having amended the Electoral Act. So the law has evolved to meet the current position of the law. So. The view of the law as it is now is that the political party is the platform, but the candidate wins the election. Okay, Mr. Balogun, if you can hear me, I just want to read a portion the of the judgment winner. Uh, by Justice Taiwo Taiwo uh, yesterday, saying that a day will come when elected officers must resign their post if they migrate to another party or seek the permission of the people uh, for permission before they decamp also said they had a vehicle which conveyed them and that vehicle belongs to the plaintiff imagine in this case the pdp they went and say they cannot abandon the vehicle and I, I just as we wind down in about a minute i just want to ask you i mean we've had people defect in recent time from governors to lawmakers and and all of that and, well their, their cases i imagine are not in court uh, just yet as we've seen with their boy and crossover should they be worried Where 
the the well the the, the, the clock therein is the, the 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 will of Nigerian justice, just like anywhere in the world, grind so slowly. This dramatic personnel, they have barely ten months to leave the office. Will they have be able to? Will the Supreme Court have be able to pronounce on both a Boyin State matter or Cross River matter by the time these guys will have left the office? So then the, the question will not be whether indeed they should be worried. The time is only time will tell, because the the the, 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 the money of the of course all the matter they are going to go to the Supreme Court, but then. Not the, the, the boy case is in court of appeal already, but they have not set possibly they have not settled their brief before they settle their brief before the court of appeal will hear them and before the matter will proceed to Supreme Court. February will be here, February there will be another national election for whatever is what I believe Supreme Court is going to retreat its position on this point, whether they are out of office or within, but at least to be able to also make the, the position of the law ascertainable and also settle that point on whether it's the political party or is the candidate or is he both. Indeed, I agree with Justice Taiwo Taiwo. That is position, which you just read out, is consistent with Indian constitution. If morally, morally, I'm sure all of us are on the same page. Morally, if you use party A to get to an office, if you want to join party B by section 40 of the constitution, which is pronounced upon even in that echo matter, you are at liberty, even Supreme Court, in Atiku Abubakar's case, you are at liberty to join another party. However, there will be consequences. You should be able to resign your position. Then you are free to go and seek for electorate support to join party B and contest under that banner. I feel that is the right thing to do. Well, However, is that the position of the law now? It's another ball game entirely. You know, well, the law as it is and the law as it ought to be. They are two different things entirely. Mm -hmm. So as it is now, the law, as far as executive is concerned, is they are allowed to jump anyhow without consequences. That is determined by Supreme Court, Aton General of Federation, and Atiku Abubakar during the Obasanjo regime. They said, no, stop there. In the wisdom of the constitutional maker, they put that clause for the legislature, but for the executive, they deliberately did not put it for whatever reason. So for as far as we are concerned today, the constitutional provision is set to concerning the National Assembly and the House of Assembly but with respect to the executive, there's no provision. Uh, yeah, we have just seen Justice Echo's decision now in a boy. Even though Justice Echo in that judgment also refer to the explicit provision with respect to the legislature. He said, however, despite the fact that there's no provision for the executive, the, 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 my Lord now went for that to now say, that notwithstanding, should they now be allowed to continue this way? You know, some people okay. say that's in the realm of morality. Well, um, Mr. Balogun, it, it's interesting, you know, that, you know, the more we discuss these issues, trying to resolve them, the more they, the onion peels, and then we see more and more perspectives to it. Most certainly an ongoing conversation. But for now, we have to thank you so much for being a part of our program this morning. Wale Balogun is a legal practitioner and partner with Greenbridge Partners. Thank you so much for your time this morning.